It's February 2020, and just a day shy of his 81st birthday, Kenzo Takada is impressed by the brand that still bears his name. It's great. Really great. I'm very happy. It's wonderful. The collection is elegant, relaxed, but also structured. Just a few months later, Kenzo died after contracting COVID-19. He was a sartorial rebel, fusing bold floral prints and innovative cuts in a style that came to represent the revolutionary spirit of the 1970s. But today, Felipe Oliveira Baptista, the sixth person to head up design at Kenzo since an LVMH takeover, prefers to embrace activism. This year, his focus was the global destruction of bee populations. These days, fashion knows it has to engage with the wider world to remain relevant. I think people are now seeing the world like a baby, like for the first time again, and people feel like they can escape finally and see the world. And I think that it's really important that that's reflected in our art, and it has been. I, I've not been able to see many shows this season, but that I have, I think, has been really influenced by this time that we've been trapped away, and, and I think it's like, you know, really influencing people. This year, despite the absence of international buyers, some fashion houses like Dior have decided to return to the catwalk to reveal their latest collections. The last time I actually went to a fashion show in person must have been at least a year ago. And it was the same for the Venice International Film Festival this year, where I was a judge. It was a real shock to be back in the cinema, sitting next to strangers in front of a screen. It felt great, and I'd forgotten that feeling. And I'm expecting to experience that sort of thing again today, that forgotten pleasure of seeing a fashion show with my own eyes. Because a fashion show is a sort of live performance. It's important not to forget that. Even in the midst of a health crisis, we mustn't forget the importance of art. I decided to attend this fashion week to be able to speak about culture. At Dior, Maria Grazia Curie is continuing her string of collaborations with feminist artists. These panels, made to resemble Gothic stained glass windows, are collages of words and phrases evoking female experience. It's the work of artist Lucia Marcucci. The collection itself is inspired by a collection designed by Christian Dior in Japan in 1957 that fused the couturier's formal skills with the fluidity of Japanese fabrics. Curie was keen to reflect on the ways in which in recent months, fashion has become more of a private pastime than a public one. So the idea was uh, uh, to work uh, in, with this point in the mind because I think that in this time, uh, probably we feel that we have to take care of us. And so probably um, our conversation with our body and also with the clothes is uh, more personal. We use them really also for stay at home in a way that uh, could be help uh, to feel uh, better. There is this uh, superficial idea about fashion, that is fashion is something uh, only for rich people, uh, only for... Uh, uh, to, to, because it's fun. I think that there is a real work of people behind this uh, work and also that uh, Textile in general uh, is part of uh, humanity culture. We are not to forget uh, Penelope. <laughs> Penelope, who in Homer's Odyssey famously wove and then unwove a burial shroud only to weave it again in a continuous act of invention. That's something that's intrinsic to the world of fashion and fashion designers. Now that's also what we saw with Christian Dior himself. We saw it with Yves Saint Laurent. When designers create new clothes, what we're really talking about is the future, that anticipation. It's the mastery of a future in which fashion is fulfilling new needs and responding to new challenges. The Nigerian Kenneth Ize designed his collection in Lagos during lockdown. It's his second time at Paris Fashion Week, and his choice of city was by no means incidental. It was something very challenging. It was something very sad because George Floyd happened. I was going to skip the season. Then I thought, like, no, I'm not going to skip the season. I can't let the people that I'm working with, I can't let them down. I thought about, okay, 
um, there was also like, you know, as a queer person from, from Nigeria, it's not, it's not allowed to be queer. You don't, you don't do that. Like, why, why can I not have a guy just have a makeup on his face in Lagos from where I'm from? Like, why can I not just have a guy paint his nails and the police is not gonna stop me? On Why are you painting your nails? So, to be able to also show my collection here in Paris, it has a reason, and my reason is a message back home. It's like I'm writing a letter back home. I want the leaders taking care of us, quote unquote, the president, the vi, you know, the in politics. I want them to see this, and I want them to start thinking fresh and different. Fashion can, of course, be frivolous and indulgent, but at its best, it can also be political. Running for the White House is your weekly look at what's going on in the U.S. presidential race, whether it's the picture of the week, the latest controversy, what campaigns are focusing on, or what to expect looking ahead. We bring you all the main stories in the lead-up to the November 3rd election. So join us every Friday on France 24 for a new edition of Running for the White House. Running for the White House on France 24 and France24.com.